everyone welcome to our youtube channel in this video we will discuss about acute cholecystitis you know in this video series we will mainly focus on the mcq uh, questions which will appear in your final mbbs examination so here i will describe you the facts you need to know regarding acute cholecystitis to answer the mcq questions so what is acute cholecystitis so acute cholecystitis is inflammation of the gallbladder so you know your gallbladder is there in your right hypochondria and it it gets inflamed in a short period so it is acute we call it acute cholecystitis so acute cholecystitis can occur with gallstones or not so it is 90% calculus which it occurs with gallstones and 10% it can be a calculus so acute cholecystitis can occur without gallstones as well in gallstone cholecystitis which is calculus the gallstones get obstructed in the cystic duct and the mucus is filled in the gallbladder and get infected and inflammated and that's how the cholecystitis occurs so in this picture it shows the normal gallbladder and the inflamed gallbladder with gallstones so with inflammation all the features of inflammation are there it is swell it is erythematous and the patient feels pain the blood flow to the area is high and the warmth and the all features of acute inflammation must be there and what are the clinical features of acute cholecystitis how do these patients present so the patient has abdominal pain in the right hypochondria or right upper quadrature region or it may be in the epigastric region as well and this pain radiates to the right shoulder or back and the patient has severe steady persistent pain for prolonged duration and it lasts for about 4 to 6 hours and the patient may have the associated complaints like nausea vomiting anorexia and also the patient may have fever in clinical examination you can elicit the murphy sign where you palpate the area of uh, where the gallbladder is the tip of the nine coaster cartilage and while pressing ask the patient to breathe and when the patient deeply inhales he will feel intense pain and stops the breathing suddenly so that is murphy's sign so in clinical examination you will uh, detect the murphy's sign and also your blood investigations will reveal leukocytosis which indicates inflammation and also the other inflammatory markers will also be high like crp and if these clinical features and the physical examination findings and investigative findings are there then you should proceed with an urgent ultrasound scan in the ultrasound scan the scan will show gallbladder wall thickening or edema and also there will be fluid around the gallbladder which is called pericholecystic fluid and also there will be sonographic murphy sign where instead of our hand pressing the right hypochondriac re region the scan probe will press that area and elicit the murphy sign so these are the sonographic features of acute cholecystitis the gallbladder wall thickening or edema pericholecystic fluid and sonographic murphy sign up to now we discuss about the pathogenesis clinical presentation and diagnosis of acute cholecystitis now we will discuss about the treatment so we will mainly focus on the treatment for calculus cholecystitis so if a patient presenting with cholecystitis the initially you should do iv fluid correct electrolytes and pain control and then start on empiric iv antibiotic treatment so if the patient is unstable then you should stabilize the patient the appropriate initial resuscitation should be done and 
after the initial care then you should move on to the definitive care of acute cholecystitis so in the acute cholecystitis uh, initial presentation there are indications for emergency cholecystectomy so if the patient has gallbladder gangrene or necrosis or gallbladder perforation or the patient is having emphysematous cholecystitis so in those situations then these are indications for emergency cholecystectomy however if it is not having any of those complications then no need to do emergency cholecystectomy then we should see whether the patient is a good surgical candidate which means he the patient has less comorbidities and uh, less risk for anesthesia and the patient is fit for anesthesia uh, and uh, we can safely proceed with the uh, surgery then the guideline recommended treatment is hot cholecystectomy where we do laparoscopic cholecystectomy in the same hospital admission usually within 3 days if the patient is not a good surgical candidate candidate if uh, the patient has lot of comorbidities and patient uh, is unstable and cannot proceed with uh, the surgery safely so the patient may not be fit for anesthesia at that stage we should see whether the patient is critically ill or not if the patient is critically ill or septic then since we cannot proceed with the emergency cholecystectomy we should do a drainage drainage procedure like percutaneous or endoscopic gallbladder drainage and after this percutaneous or endoscopic gallbladder drainage if patient is clinically deteriorating then we can proceed with the emergency cholecystectomy but if after this procedure the patient has clinical improvement then we do the management continuously continue the antibiotics and other supportive therapy and after about 6 weeks we can do interval cholecystectomy interval means after about 6 weeks we plan cholecystectomy then do it as elective procedure assume that the patient is not having any indication for emergency cholecystectomy but not a good surgical candidate as well then uh, the patient is not critically ill also at that stage we can just continue the antibiotics and see whether the patient clinically improves or not if the patient is deteriorating with uh, conservative management with antibiotics then we can do a percutaneous or endoscopic cold bladder drainage and proceed with further management the patient is not critically ill and with antibiotics the patient improves clinically then we can plan cholecystectomy after 6 weeks and do a interval cholecystectomy but in resource poor setting what is happening is in a patient uh, who is having acute cholecystitis and no need of emergency cholecystectomy even though the patient is a good candidate for hot cholecystectomy due to the poor resources sometimes we plan for interval cholecystectomy after six weeks and do that so this is the management algorithm for policy acute cholecystitis you should remember this you should start that with the initial care the resuscitation iv fluids correct electrolytes pain control and empiric iv antibiotic therapy and after those things then we should come to the definitive care so this knowledge is essential for you to answer your mcq questions then we will see an mcq question how to answer that this is one mcq which has come regarding acute cholecystitis this is a true false type question so it asks regarding acute cholecystitis cholecystectomy within 48 hours is contraindicated so we should see whether these statements are true or false so it is false because 
we can do hot coli cystectomy within three days so within 48 hours obviously we can do hot coli cystectomy and also if there is any indication for emergency coli cystectomy like emphysematous coli cystitis the gold bladder gangrene or gold bladder perforation then we can do emergency coli cystectomy so a is false b uh, is Mucosal of the gallbladder is treated by image guided drainage. So, uh, mucosal, if it is not yet uh, infected, then there is no indication for drainage procedure. But obviously, if a mucosal get infected, then it is an indication for uh, drainage procedure. So, B is false. C says jaundice is a characteristic feature. It is false. Obviously, if there is no obstruction to, to the bile drainage, jaundice cannot happen. So, in uh, cholecystitis, usually the cystic duct is obstructed. The common bile duct, the bile or other bile is normal. There may, may not be obstruction. So, jaundice is not a characteristic feature acute cholecystitis and D says occurs in the absence of wall storms yes because in the patho pathogenesis we mentioned that 10% uh, can happen without wall storms so yeah, D is true and E says presence of pericholecystic fluid on ultrasound scan is a characteristic feature yes the ultrasound scan features now you know the gallbladder wall edema can occur and pericholecystic fluid can occur so uh, this is a true statement so e is also true like that mcq questions can be asked in your paper and with this knowledge you can answer those questions